running fans, jumping fans, throwing fans, all around athletics fans. Welcome to Talking in Ovals. How's everybody doing out there on this Monday, September 23rd, 2024, episode number 107. I'm Alex. Partner in crime over there is Dave. What's going on, Dave? Not much. Just uh, waiting for these big meets to start coming in this XC season because we're kind of in that lull and then all of a sudden it just pops and it's just action, action, action. So it's just funny seeing how everyone's training and how they're handling all these early season meets because then it, it's just going to come quick. And it's kind of always interesting, right? Because the meet schedules different every once in a while. And like we're having all these kind of division meets and stuff happening now, early season. Where before a lot of class meets had, early. A lot yeah. of class meets where before you had like your time with your dual meets to kind of get ready to go and do these types of things. So yeah. it's interesting to see the competitive juices being high now. Now, for those keeping score at home, I sound like dog crap. And it's because I'm a little sick. So it is what it is. I'm going to power through. This is going to be the Dave Hyatt show today. But um, <laughs> I'm going to do as much as I can. Probably won't talk as much. But I am here. Um, we're going to get into the fun stuff. Before we do, continuing to give a shout out to our buddy Adam Nalvin. Third annual River Rock and Run 5K, Saturday, November 16th. Run that 5K. You can either do it two people at a time or two people handing it off with the baton or one person going solo. All the proceeds go to the Monmouth and Ocean County Food Bank. So it's right before Thanksgiving. Go there, run, have fun. Um, you know, it's for a great cause. Get some food, get some drinks, and just go on Facebook, search River Rock and Run 5K. That's where you can register. Last week's guest, we had a great time. Talk to Benjamin Shu, um, University great. of Texas commit and the top discus thrower in the country, one of the best throwers in the country for high school. And just what an awesome young man. What a great kid, man. I mean, just yeah. so well spoken and, and you know just the 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 fact that he's ranked two in the state as a heavyweight and he could have went d1 for football and that he yeah. chose track that makes my heart smile but it also just shows that what an amazing well-rounded athlete that he is and it's kind of like the beat goes on right every high school we kid the kid we've had on has been incredible um it, this generation is like a gold mine for us doing a podcast because none of these kids are awkward we're significantly more awkward than they are so yes. it was great having them on so I want to jump right in. Oh, before we do that, we have no PR still. That's got to stop yes. getting mad at you guys. Coaches, we're coming after you. We are coming after all of you. So we better get some PRs. But this week, we're talking to somebody who Dave and I personally witnessed have a ton of PRs. She was an absolute monster in both high school and college. And we are excited to have her on. She is both of our friends, one of our athletes, Cassandra Paul of you. Did I say mm -hmm. it right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Cassandra yeah. Paul of you, formerly Cassandra Rusco, uh, Manchester High School and Stockton University. Great. What's going on, Cassandra? Uh, nothing. Just got done with work. Um, excited to be on the podcast talking to you guys since you both kind of coached me. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In some way, Dave did. I kind of was peripheral just were, yelling yeah. at you every once in a while. You were on the track. I yeah. was mostly with the guys at that time, like yes. less with the girls mm -hmm. and mostly with the guys there. But we're excited to have you on. Absolutely. So <laughs> I want to start off with the same question we ask you that we ask all of our guests. And that's going to be good for me because I could sit here and be quiet. Um, <laughs> when did you get the spark to become a runner and be like, okay, this is something that I actually want to pursue, actually want to do. Um, well, going into middle school, actually, you know, you're just kind of finding like, I know I want to do a sport, but I don't know what it is. Um, I don't even remember what sports um, were available. I just tried out for cross country the first time. And I was like, oh, this isn't that bad. And um, the girls were like huffing and puffing at the end. And I was like, I actually feel pretty good. Like, I feel like I could do more. Like, I just think I had... Um, a lot of endurance for some reason and it just kind of stuck and then I tried out for like basketball and stuff and coach Pierce was my coach at the time and he was also the basketball coach and he said you should probably stick to running because I can do a layup <laughs> so I was like all right I guess this is what I'm doing <laughs> That's, That's awesome. fantastic. And, you know, for those keeping score at home, Coach Pierce, that is Christy Rampone's father for anyone that wants to know uh, inside baseball there. But that actually sounds like Mr. Pierce as well to be yeah. that blunt and just be like, yeah, you might just want to stick with this kid. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that, I love that, that it's just kind of like, that's what I went for. That's what I tried out for. And I ended up, and you know, it always starts out and it ends, Dave. I was better than people. So I yeah. liked it and I was winning things. And that always helps, yeah. right? It's always a big part of it. So, 
that's your spark. You get going. You obviously like by the time you get to high school, people know who you are, right? You're a good runner. You're you're expected to start doing good things coming to high school. What are some of your favorite memories that you have from middle school, high school, high school, Octon in college and everything? Bring us down memory lane. Oof, middle school, I like hardly remember, but <laughs> um, high school, it was definitely running with uh, Kim Schwartz um, and our little crew that we had going. They just made it fun coming to practice every day. So when practice is fun, then you know oh, the yeah. meets are going to be fun. And it's always good when you're like best friends with the people you're running with. Um, lots of jokes, um, lots of messing with each other. Pretty sure Coach Hyatt called me Casper. For a lot of the time you were you, you um, had a very pale complexion <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if we could i don't know if Hyatt could do that nowadays <laughs> no <laughs> probably not <laughs> um no but it was really it was really fun and i and we actually ran with the guys a lot too yes. because yeah. yeah that was great and we can keep pace with them so super motivating and then i just remember like you know, be South champs. And that was a big deal. And just constantly the team was doing really well. Cause we had some great sprinters. We had great distance people, throwers. We had like Chandler yeah. Copeland and Oof. we just had a great like crew. Yeah. I think one of my, uh, I mean, one of my favorite moments in all of my coaching, uh, past was when we won the ocean County relay meet. You know, here we are, this this little school going down and, and winning the, the whole Ocean County Relays. I just remember it, the look on everyone's face at the end of that meet. And, and as, as coaches, as, as we were playing, like, oh, wow, we're, we're in it now. So we need you guys to, to run this event. And, and everyone was just all on board and wanted to do whatever that it took to get that title. Because it's, it's not often that, you know, Manchester girls win the Ocean County Relays. So that was one of yeah. my favorite moments as a coach. Seeing the jubilation on all of your guys' faces was just a amazing yeah and like any of the pen relays events were awesome running the four by four it was just a great experience because like i was able to run at pen relays in college against like really high competitive like athletes for um the 5k and it just prepared me for that you know and so what was it like because you really think about it you were a part of one of the deepest manchester women's teams because a lot of the times when you think of teams for manchester track it's a lot of the men's boys um yeah. the guys in the late 90s early There's 2000s some great and girl girl individuals, individuals. but and, yeah. in terms of team yes. like you said your team has to be one of the best teams um all around again between you and kim and like you said chandler and even um Kylie you Samanowitz. Over with janae right with janae valman janae, yeah, janae yeah. Was there. Yeah. you had individuals between yourself janae kylie chandler covering so many different areas and scoring mm. in so many meets there that you know i think it's a team that manchester should look back on because i don't think you guys get enough credit as a team no. um mm. that you guys deserve do, do you want some recognition from Manchester? Should I get on coach? <laughs> uh, yeah. Guys some recognition? Yeah. Oh, she kind of champs, man. Oh, she kind of really champs. I mean, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. So you get through high school, you obviously have a good crew and you're excited for that. And that helps you c want to continue to do the sport. Yes. What are some of your favorite memories from college over at Stockton? Um, so like, obviously individually, like just finishing out my career as an athlete, a student athlete, um, becoming an all American, like that was great. Um, I, I would say, but the team aspect more so of winning, um, our NJAC championship as a team was crazy. Like nothing beats that electricity, the happiness that you get just fingers crossed and like coming down to the wire of like, you know, are we going to win? Are we not? Cause it was very close. Um, and we, we haven't done that in, like Stockton history yeah. for a very long time, if not ever. So um, that was an amazing goal that we all had collectively. And it was one of my favorite memories. And there's a picture of all of us just like jumping in the air for joy when they said Stockton. And it was a great experience. That's really so cool. When you're in high school, you had kind of a, a unique situation where your cross country coach was Tom Resch. And then in college, you go run for his son, Jason Resch. <laughs> Was was there any dialogue there as you were choosing schools, you know, like in, in terms of how you would choose the school and, you know, because he was your coach, did that give Stockton a upper hand? Well, yeah, that's he was kind of like hinting towards that. But I was like kind of dead set on Mammoth because I got recruited from them and I got a scholarship from them. My only that. thing. Yeah. My only thing was I was like. 
they don't have physical therapy and I'm probably not going to be a professional runner. So I'm going to, you know, work my ass off for running, but yeah. I need to have a career at the end of the day. Sure. So, um, Tom Rush had a big influence in that, but it was also a matter of like, I knew what I wanted to do going into college and I knew I wanted to run and I did want to do physical therapy. So, well, I mean, two, two great schools, you would have had a great success if you ran for coach Joe at a yeah, mom. We love coach Joe too. Either way you, you, you would have made out. I just, I loved just, it there. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, but it's so, when you're choosing a college, like what went into your mind frame? I, I guess you just told us like the uh, mm -hmm. major, but how much of it was the program and the track team itself? Like when you went on a recruiting trip, how much of, of that factored into? And was there any other schools besides yes. in Stockton? Were there any other um, ones you were looking at? If you were I good, knew I wanted, could have went to a lot of schools. Yeah, I knew I, I wanted to stay in New Jersey. Um because I got recruited by like a couple of schools like in Florida, but I honestly can't remember because I knew it was down to like yeah. Monmouth and Stockton. Um, but the recruiting process was like a little um, different where I felt super at home at Stockton talking to like Coach Rash and like all the athletes, they were super welcoming. And when I went to Monmouth, they were just as welcoming, but I didn't meet any of the athletes. I kind of just met the coach and they broke it down to like numbers and like, you know, this is your scholarship. If you don't meet this, then, you know, you don't get it basically. And I didn't like that pressure. Like I love running and I knew I wanted it to be fun for me. And I already yeah. had a lot of pressure becoming a doctor of physical therapy. So yeah. I wanted to enjoy it as much as I could. Not to say that it wasn't super hard, like navigating all of that in at Stockton, but um, I just felt at home there. But that's huge, though, right? Because, like, if your teammates are your family and, like, they're close, like, you're going to go through those nights where it's just pressure and it's not like you're alone, right? That's always a benefit when you're with people that, you know, we've seen it with Dave. Dave has had a ton of his former roommates come on this show early on who are now coaches. And mm -hmm. it's because, like, you're probably still best friends. And at your wedding, a ton of those girls are probably at your wedding. And it's like that bond helps. And as you're battling through PT or maybe difficult times in training, you have people to lean on and rely on, and that's huge. Yeah. And that's yeah. ultimately an awesome choice. Yeah. So you're you're at Stockton. Um, at that point, there really hadn't been like they were just building with you know their tradition. You had a huge role in that. So, what did what what role did you want to play as you got older in, in Stockton? Like, were you did you become more of a leader as a <laughs> spokesperson, or did you were just more of a leader by how you? contributed to the team on the track i mean so just with the sport it's you get what you put into it so um i just kind of led by example with that um coming onto the team as a freshman was super intimidating because i wanted to like work my ass off and like train really hard and stay with the front group of girls and just show them what i got and um so that was a little bit of a culture shock for me oh. but um after i like you know showed them like, Hey, I'm going to do this consistently. It's not just going to be like a one-off thing. Um, they started to accept that a little bit more. And then, um, I just, I had to try to recruit girls to want to stick with it, with the training and all that. And we were trying so hard to get Alicia Belko to do cross country. And we finally convinced her and obviously it paid off because she, um, still runs to this day very well. And, uh, yeah. That's so, uh, yeah. Good, you, know, so, so, you know, being at a smaller school, you know, those are the things that you have to do. You have to self promote and, and, you, and you have to promote it because it's just there's not as, as many avenues for people to learn about the program. What are some benefits that you found going to a smaller school over um, maybe a larger school? All of my professors knew about my running career. They right, cool. would congratulate me and embarrass me every class. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, so that really spread the word. Um it was, it was really nice. Everybody kind of knew about me. It was always on the Stockton like website. Um, definitely like more recognition than maybe I would have gotten at um, like Monmouth or like, a bigger school there. Cause there's a lot of girls that would be close to my time or like, you know, in a group with me. So I just definitely felt like a leader um, and a role model, which was nice. That's always fun that, you know, but getting that recognition is a good thing. So, um, when you were thinking about that, and obviously there is a size difference between Mammoth and Stockton, did that come into play with the academic side of wanting to know your professors better out of Stockton where like, you know, you were 
not just trying to get in there for running. You were trying to also, you had an academic goal. And I know some people look at the differences of, okay, I'm going to be in a classroom of 25 as opposed to a classroom of 40 or 50. Did Mm -hmm. that play a difference in your choosing towards the end? You know, I, I don't think so because I didn't know what I was getting into at Stockton and I'm glad I did because I was like, Oh, I could thrive at like a 400 plus classroom. It'll be fine. But um, once you're in that, cause I mean, I had a class with like 200 people at right. Stockton at one point, but that was the highest, the rest were like 30 to 50. Um, so at the end of the day, I'm glad I did it, but I wasn't sure that I knew that going in that I wouldn't like that. <laughs> makes sense. It completely so this, makes sense. <clears throat> this show is all about you. So let's, let, let's get into what are some of the, the times and the things that you did at Stockton? Because when you left, yeah. you were, I mean, that whole record <laughs> board was just filled with, your name. So what was that like? Um, was that a goal that you went in as a freshman or was that something that just kind of came in as you saw your times progress? And what was it like knowing that you left that school as probably their greatest distance runner ever on the female side? Um, it's kind of surreal to think about because you never think you're going to get there. But um, like Coach Rash and um, Coach Parker at Stockton really just like ingrained it in me like you're gonna do great things here they started saying that like freshman year and I just um I got into that and I believed in it and I was like all right I just got to work really hard and um my goal was to get to that all-american status I didn't really care about the um the record so much um but it was a nice bonus because I was just trying to run the best that I could um, and take as many girls with me to that level as I could. Um, and it was nice to still see those records there. Although I kind of hope that they get people that continue to break those. Cause then that means the Stockton program continues to grow. Um, so I'm always looking at like what they're doing there. You know, it was always fun because at the time that you were running at Stockton, I was coaching at Marist and you know, we had Kim Schwartz over there who went to Manchester with you and it was awesome coaching Kim, but it was always cool seeing you at meets. And I saw you at a handful of indoor meets and stuff, uh, mostly indoor, less outdoor. And it was just always cool to see you running. Cause it would kind of be like, you know, what are you going for today? And just watching you be successful and running fast and things like that. It was just, it was nice to see that you were just continuing to do really good things. Did you yeah. have a fun time? as you were in college, seeing former teammates and former people you competed against in the short conference at meets and kind of like, was there like a mini bond when it was like, it wasn't a teammate, but it was a short conference person. Like, Hey, we're here. What are we doing? Let's have some fun type of thing. Oh yeah, (laughs) definitely. Yeah. When it was like either somebody from high school or somebody that was in the conference and you recognized each other, it was really cool. Like I remember, um, there was like these two twins that were running at Rowan and I forget their names off the top of my head, but I saw them a lot, obviously, because I ran against Rowan. It was just really cool. Like we would give each other a fist bump. Um, there's just some like camaraderie against each other. Um, and we were always happy no matter who beat who it was great to see each other. So that's a question being yeah. in a Jersey school, yeah. obviously there's a lot of Jersey people there. Was there a rivalry between like greater Middlesex, short conference, ocean County mom like, mm. was there like kind of a divide between the counties <laughs> and the conferences and things like that? And we were better here. You were better there. Yeah. Or was it just kind of all behind at that point? We were just Stockton. Uh, you're talking from like a coach standpoint though, like athlete wise, I kind of, I always focused on myself and what I was doing that day. And like, other coaches would try to like hype it up and just be like, you got to beat this girl. Like she runs these times. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I'm just going to go out and run (laughs) what I want to run. And if I beat her, then that's great. But I don't like, I didn't like to focus on the individual. Um, If she had a great race day, fine. I'm going to try my best to do that too. So that's I'm awesome. definitely so, not a traditional runner in that aspect. Well, I Dang. feel like all the greats have a traditional style, right? Yeah. Like you mm-hmm. weren't there to compete against anybody. You were there to run fast. And yeah, I want to get goal. first place. So I'm going to try, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think, Dave, we talk about this all the time. We do. There's a lost art there that you did. You were looking to race every single time and win the it's time, time happen, now, right it didn't matter if you were going over there and the race was you know you had to run a 220 to win okay it's fine mm-hmm. a 22800 not my best i don't care i won the heat right i won mm-hmm. the race that was the goal and that's a lost art in running nowadays now do you still follow running at all uh here and there yeah definitely not as much as you guys but because <laughs> well, everything now is all 
it's time trial. Ex I mean, except for your Olympics or your worlds, like people right. are so happy getting tenth place, but they ran like a five second PR, and and that's fine. It's just it there seems to be this this switch, more so on that pro level where like place doesn't really matter as much. And I kind of miss the fact that like place should matter. Like you should want to yeah. always win. Time doesn't matter. But you know, we had talked to all these athletes and they all say the reason why it, it matters is because it matters to their sponsors. Sponsors care more mm -hmm. about time than unless you are like the Olympic champ, but minus that, like it's so it's all time. So as a person who used to run, who used to, you know, focus more on actually winning, what do you feel about that? Like, do you feel that time should matter as much as everyone makes it seem? Or do you feel that it's, you know, like you said, you were always just about winning. Mm -hmm. I had a, I had a hard time. Um, I wouldn't say I was like bad at pacing, but it wasn't something I focused on during races, which I know it's important and I know how to do it. But at the end of the day, I would just go out and run my hardest and how like I felt and how my body felt um, in that moment. And I think that's a great thing because then you end up running a really great time when you're like, I feel good. This is where I'm going to push. I'm going to follow the pack and then I'm going to try to break away. Like I definitely was like a kicker at the end of races and I would just, you know, try to win with that. But um, I think obviously it's important to like run a fast time and that's what everybody's focused on. But it does stink when it's like come race day, like you shouldn't have to think about timing you should think about right. like let me try to win the race because it's all grit at the end of the like the race whoever yeah. pushes the hardest leans in the hardest that's the fun part about it um so yeah so as much as we were just talking about racing i'm gonna make you talk about your times what would your prs end up being when you were at uh stockton well my my event was the 1500 yep. so that was my end time was like 428 i think okay. um yep. And then my, my, my mile time was 4.57. Um, 800, I think, was two, 2.15 maybe. My 800 was meh. And then my 5K was like 17.22 wow. or 3. That was, oh, that was great. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. speaking, of, speaking of events, because as you know, when you're in high school, you're asked to run multiple events on you know multiple mm -hmm. meets when you get to, to college like did you have to find what event worked best for you and and what was that process like to say I, like because you know like i said in high school you're you're kind of running everything so you don't really know maybe right. what your exact best one is but in college you, you get a chance to more uber focus on one event how did you come about to find that the 15 was your event and what were some of those trials and, and tribulations that you kind of had to go through to mm. get to that point that 800 i had to run that 800 so many times <laughs> and i'm finally me and coach were like i don't think this is it like i think we got to go a little step higher because i was just hitting yeah. the same time every single time yeah. and in um, high school you, you did focus more on on the eight yeah in, in, yeah in high school yep yep and so i think we discovered that my training actually had to be ramped up with mileage in order for me to run better in the 800 and also the 15 and the mile which was interesting so we had to up the mileage a little bit and then we were like okay this is like where we need to be and then the mile is just kind of where i i shined a little bit more and for some reason it was always like mile and 800 uh every single time and the 800 always happened to be like after the mile so right. <laughs> be a little tired on that one yeah <laughs> so it got there no, I'm saying it's it, it's just funny because like you do have to almost pick, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. not that you just have to run that one, but it's it's just such a different mindset than high school in general, you know, because you just get to focus more on on what it is that you want to focus on. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I had to go back to that 800 like so many times, and it's just yeah, it wasn't the one. <laughs> And it's now like like the 800 one from being your focus to kind of like your change up race, right? Like when you ran yeah. miles, then Coach Jason would be like, okay, let's run an eight. Let's get some speed on your legs. And yep. then we can go back to running fast 15s. Like where before yeah. it was the eight and then the 15 was kind of that workout race that yeah, high school. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. it's like, that's kind of cool that it kind of flipped to where mm -hmm. it was. So you obviously were not just a good middle distance runner. You were good long distance runner you were integral to your success for cross country and everything as well um for the layman's out there how was your training different for your longer races as opposed to your middle distance races um 
we spent many days um, on Liebig at Stockton, running on road, high mileage um, intervals with that, running as a group, um, more like in the like woods and in the trails, running miles and miles, like just high mileage and mile repeats on like hot um days running mile repeats on a field that has crispy grass <laughs> it was pretty terrible um not my favorite days <laughs> pretty terrible. Crispy, crispy grass <laughs> but, um and then versus like track i love being on the track because there's like everybody around you can talk to the sprinters and it was just so much more fun and i could run with some of the sprinters some days and run with the distance runners the other days because that's where i kind of thrived was doing the speed stuff with some of the faster girls sprinter girls versus cross country you just kind of you know are with the same group the whole time so i just so, i love track <laughs> so what what you're saying is, is that cross country was more of a group-based training whereas track was a more of an individual was an individualized training for you yeah because you can go with like one group one day one group the other day it was like more well-rounded yeah so uh is there an indoor track at stockton and if not where did you guys like i i assume you just practiced outside yeah <laughs> Mostly outside. You know, hey, you know what though? It makes you tougher. And you know, like yeah. living here in Jersey, like that's what you're used to it. Only knew anyway from high school. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting though. You might be the first middle distance to distance person that prefers track over XC that we've had on this show. Because really? most of our people <laughs> that have been distance, they're like, oh, we love XC, the camaraderie, the teamness, team all that. That was so much fun where you're just like, I like running fast. Like the yeah. track is where I can be fast. And it's like you are you're you're standing alone there, which is awesome because that was always my preference. I was always I like being on the track much more. Like I enjoyed trails, you know, training with the guys and mm -hmm. running around and do a distance with them. But it was like I like to be on the track and turn in ovals and run quick. And oh yeah, I was very much in the same way with you that with that. Yeah, I had to be talked into running cross country in high school. So, <laughs> so you probably didn't like that it jumped up to six k too for the no. <laughs> for the, the, extra, the extra thousand was probably like, oh, do I still have to do this? Yeah, why can't That's I? My just struggle fly? now. I'm like, I love a half marathon, but a marathon, it's a do different you, animal. Are you, doing, are you doing halves right now? Have you done? I one? did. I did halves in the past, um, and I did marathons. Um, but I just, I don't, I don't like the marathon. I mean, I want to get into it. Like I want to do like New York and, and Boston just right. to do it, but they're not my favorite. I think you should just jump up to Ironman. Just, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. just jump yeah. up to Ironman and, you know, just Honestly. go in and just, just try and run for half a day and see how much yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> run, bike and swim for swim. half a day. Those, those yeah, people. My swimming sucks. I need to learn a better method with swimming, but yes, I would totally do it. <laughs> I mean, and you know, it's fun that that like becomes like, we've seen a lot. I've seen like sprinters that I've coached at Maris and I'm like, they would puke because we do like 200 repeats or something or 400s. Mm -hmm. And then like a few years later, it's like, oh, I'm running the New York City Marathon. It's like, excuse me, like, yeah. I'm doing mileage. I just did my 13 mile pre-race. So I'm like, stop. Like, where did this <laughs> come from? Like, <laughs> what motivated you to keep going post-college? Yeah. Like, because it's tough, especially mm -hmm. someone in a position like you. It's like your seasons <laughs> didn't end at the end of the season. You had championships to go to. You, you know, were you know, you went to nationals and things like that. So what was that like with your extended seasons? And how did that make you feel coming out of it? Because I know like it felt like a job as you're in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely felt like a job, but it's not just the running like training and stuff was my favorite part of my day at um stockton but it was co in combination with being in pt school for my last year as a senior yeah. um was so hard and i was working too so um i definitely needed a mental break but then again my mental break was running so then i was like <laughs> let me keep running to keep my sanity in pt school so even on like a rainy day or something, my classmates would see me just running <laughs> after class. Um, so, and it was nice being on the Stockton campus for an extra two years. So that kept, kept me motivated and I would just run on the trails like any chance that I got. Um, I ran a couple races, like the run for the diamonds in uh, Berwick, PA, which is a really cool race. Um, you win a diamond at the end if you get first place. That's You've awesome. never heard of it. Yeah. Now um, I need to get in shape. <laughs> from some half marathons but yeah it's really cool it's all uphill though so it's i don't want to get in shape i don't want to no. do that <laughs> i'm done i i disagree now 
<laughs> so have you ever got any motivation to like get back into good track shape and just be like, and just get ready to like enter masters at some point? Like, I would is that something to. that you're looking forward to? Yeah, I would love to. Um, right now, like I think I was telling you guys earlier, like my schedule with like PT, we just opened a new clinic. So it's been kind of hard, but like you said, it's a slippery slope. So I got to get is. back into it. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know what the thing is like, Dave can attest to this. You go and it's like, all right, I need to settle in for a week. I know yep. I could still work out. I'll still do X, Y, and Z, but I just can't run this week. And then yep. that week goes into <laughs> two weeks and then two weeks goes into a month. And then you're two months later and you're like, you know what? I'm going to do my run. And you go yep. and you try to do the same pace you normally do. You come back and you're just like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. I, I need two months slower. <laughs> like, or to two months turns into 20 years and you're like, <laughs> what? Do, what happened? like, why do I have a stomach now? Like what happened? Yeah. Yeah. And then you're just like, I just uh, need to not eat for the two years now and we'll be good. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. So it is, it does, no, but, it's, cool, but life does happen. Yeah, and that's the yeah. thing too. But I it's, mean, there's not a week that goes by. I don't run, but it's right. not like I'm training for anything. You yes. Know? And that's no, what makes it harder too. You're not fitness training. Though, it's, it's good. You know, like I always say like running is a sport that, all you need is shoes that you can have with you for the rest of your life. You don't need yeah. anything fancy. You just need a pair of shoes and you are good. So, I mean, I, I, I love seeing when athletes stick with it, even if they're not training for anything, just for the mm. general overall benefits that running can provide you. Yeah, definitely. And I've heard people say like, you know, just sign up for a race and that'll motivate you. I've signed up for races and I've trained like, and I sat there and been like, Oh, this race is a week of good way. Let me get yep. four runs in. And uh, I signed up for <laughs> races and, and just not gone. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it does, it, that, that doesn't work. That does not work. The signing up for racist things does not work. So there's another big thing going on with you, oh, yeah. lady, and it's uh, one of the you know wasn't the reason actually that sparked me to have you on. It's kind of funny it coincided. I asked you, I think I know. before this announcement happened, but you are being inducted into the 2024 class of the Stockton Athletics Hall of Fame. Well deserved. So Absolutely. on top of being your most decorated mid-distance distance runner in school history. Now you get to be enshrined as one of the greatest of all time. What, how does that feel that you're about to be a hall of famer? Um, it, it's surreal. Like I said, it's just crazy. Um, I know I put in a ton of work and um, I know I hold all these records, which I didn't know I had five until I read that article. I thought I only had one. <laughs> So that was news. You to thought me. you had one? Yeah. <laughs> How do you not know you? Like, I can understand. It's like oh, I can see like, three or four, but four. not one. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, I, you're you're way off. <laughs> I was just really confident they were beat already. So, but um, no, I'm I'm super honored, and it's going to be really exciting to see um, my old teammate Alicia, see my old coaches. Yes. I'm so excited to see them, and like all my friends and family will be there. So um, I'm super honored, and I'm happy that it was at Stock in because I had such a great time and a great running career and all thanks to the people that just pushed me along and like motivated me there and that's including coaches teammates and my family and all the people that got me there along the way so like high school coaches and stuff like that so yeah I'll take full uh, credit for it <laughs> you got it, zero. I'm sure Jason Rush would love that <laughs> no, that was I'll all rush zero. man that was all right so I'm all gonna rest. throw this in there real quick it's a super long link but if anybody wants to that's watching somehow memorize that or screenshot this <laughs> but the ceremony is we can october add the, 18th, the link in, in, uh, in the show notes yes yeah october 18 2024 if you want to attend if you want to cheer on uh, cassandra and congratulate her on a well-deserved thing so i'm going to stir up some controversy here jason resh or tom resh which one do you prefer i cannot say that <laughs> I cannot say that. I refuse to answer. <laughs> you had to know that at some point for me. <laughs> Come no, but, on, but, uh, you got to start controversy here. Back to the Hall of Fame. Like, um, do you know like what is the whole process that uh, they had to go through? Would you have to be recommended by a coach? Was there some sort of committee? Like, how did all this come about? Or are you even privy to that information? Or do you just get a call and say, "Congratulations, you're in"? Like, do you and know anything about you? who told you that you're in? Yeah, the John. That's John cool. Heck. John Heck called me. Um, he's like the director of athletics there. Um, well, I got a text from him and I was like, well, I kind of have a feeling what this is about if he's messaging me. And so I called him and he's like, we're just letting you know, like before we like release it, that you were inducted to the Hall of Fame. He didn't mention like, you know, 
how the process right. happens. I believe that you have to be nominated. Sure. Um, so I'm sure that it was like the track, you know, community and stuff like that. And then everybody probably votes on it. So after your career, oh, go, sorry, Dave, is that your go. career? Is it something that you expected, but were kind of nervous that it wasn't going to come? Or is this something that like you pretty much expected that you were eventually going to get this call considering what you were able to do for the program? Um, I don't know. I, I was like 50, 50 on it. Cause I was like, there's a lot of good athletes. I go to Stockton. It's not just yeah. like track yeah. and field. Right. So I was You're like, it could happen one day. I have no idea like when it would happen. I didn't know it would be like this early on. So I'm glad I'm not like an old lady receiving it. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> hey, don't be mean to us. What's wrong with you? <laughs> We're a bunch of old men here. <laughs> what is that? What is the, reception been like from you know past coaches to <clears throat> past teammates to family members because like, this is a big deal to be inducted into the hall of fame of a university is it's a big deal so i mean i just want like i just want everybody out there to grasp like this is a great this is just <clears throat> such a huge honor so I'm, I'm just curious how the reaction was from everyone around you um, like all my friends and people that have been following my running career were all super shocked and they were like reading the, the article and like, they're like, wow, you actually, you did a lot of stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they're like five records. That's crazy. Like, I was like, yeah, news to me too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought but, I had one. <laughs> but no, everybody's been super awesome and supportive and congratulatory. Um, got a lot of texts. Um, a lot of my best friends are going to the ceremony too to support okay. me. So I think Davin's going. So um, oh, yeah, yeah. just uninvited. Just a, yeah, uninvited. <laughs> invite Davin. Like he's okay. He can be no. But <laughs> you have you got you actually too have a really nice tight knit group too. Uh, you guys, mm -hmm. there's always pictures of your like close friend group. You guys go and do yeah. things all the time. So it is really cool to see like you guys from high school. And it's not only the runners too. It's yeah. like just a group of you guys in your class, which I always think is really cool. And the fact that you guys support each other through all this type of stuff is mm -hmm. is really really dope. So, um. I guess closing out here because, you know, I appreciate you on yeah. a work night giving us this time. And, uh, you know, it's always fun catching up with former athletes and oh, things like the best. that. And especially <laughs> as you have this, you know, great successful careers and things like that. Um, what are you going to say when you go up there? Do yeah. you have a speech prepared? Do you have a synopsis? <sighs> do you have to go and refresh the records that you have? Do you and bring a box of tissues? <laughs> do you not bring a box of tissues? Yeah, well, I am not. I have to redeem myself because I got athlete of the year. Oh, um, you cried? And I was just teary eyed. <laughs> Nothing and wrong with that. Mumbling I over it. my words. So I'm going to go in there super confident and I get like 10 minutes to, to talk. So Ooh. I just want to say my <laughs> thanks. And I think and, uh, the years have helped me. <laughs> 10 minutes might not sound like a lot, but when you're in front of buddy, 10 minutes, not to scare you, but just make Don't sure look at how light, don't look at how bright the lights are. That doesn't help. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's easy whole, to talk about running though. Yeah, so um, I'll enjoy it. So, and lastly, so you're a physical trainer now, PT, what made you want to get into that career? Did yeah. being a runner kind of want you to steer into there considering when you become a runner, you learn a ton about your body, right? Like, especially like you, you understand more than a lot of other athletes do as a runner, because we have to listen to it. Like the runners that don't listen to their bodies are the ones that end up doing great things, but get hurt all the time. Right. So yeah. what made you want to jump into PT? Yeah that um being an athlete obviously made me interested in it because i was at a athletic training a lot i got concussions a lot um for some reason so i really enjoyed the as process. a runner were, yeah, were yeah. you the one in the, in the cross That's country the throwing elbows over in the woods Is that i got you? at least two okay not a um, not a common injury in the running <laughs> no you you would be the only mid distance maybe a thrower <laughs> here here or there but usually that's not a common thing with uh, distance runners and they get multiple ones <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, getting, get, being a runner definitely influenced it, but it was actually, um, my grandma that motivated me because she was like falling a lot in her house and we thought she was going to have to go to like a nursing home. And then we got her home physical therapy and we, it was able to keep her home for like her entirety of her life. And I just thought that was amazing. She always had a great experience and I was like, wow, it doesn't just help you know, athletes, it also helps like the older generation. So like I see a mix at my clinic now, but, um, she initially motivated me after, you know, 
me getting injured myself and going to athletic training and stuff. But, but yeah. So why choose PT over athletic training? <clears throat> well, Is it because of your uh, grandmother and you wanted to see right. multiple different people and not just stay in the athletics realm? I think with physical therapy, you have such more of a range, like athletic training, it's kind of like schools and, uh, and teams. Um, but with PT, you could work in the hospital, you can work in a nursing home, you can work in a clinic, you can work in the home, which I've done. Um, you can work at schools, you can work with professional athletes, there's such a range. So like, I get bored pretty easily. So I like to change my, um, my field of interest in my physical therapy field. So like I always choose something different to learn each year, which is fun. Keeps it entertaining. I feel like you're eventually just going to be like the traveling PT. Like you're just going to travel <laughs> around the country and pick what you want to do in this state. And it's yeah. like, Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Honestly, that could be a cool, like social media idea. Just going to yeah. traveling PT. I hope your husband's on board. Sell the house. Yeah. And, he's uh, an occupational therapist, so yeah, he just, join me too. Oh, he's an OT. Okay, there you yeah. go. You literally, just be like the traveling OTPT, like that already. Traveling show. couple, yeah. He's already a thing. <laughs> just go get a mobile home. You guys are young enough. Just drive around. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be so much fun. So, Cassandra, thank you so much for jumping on. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, guys. It was you know, so nice talking to you guys. I just want to say, you know, I mean, it's, it's always – wonderful when an ex-athlete um goes on to not only have a great career in athletics but just to to see you as this married woman and having this family and doing a job that you love you know there's a little part i think in, in all of us as a coach that, that that just makes us feel like maybe we had some little part in that so I just want to say uh, it's 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 been an honor following your journey and nothing but the absolute success and Stockton nailed it out of the park by uh, putting you in the Hall of Fame because just meeting you in high school you your work ethic and your drive was always second to a none and it was an honor being a part of this journey that you have been on so thank you. Thank you. Yep. And, you know, we're definitely all of Manchester being a fellow alum and things like that, fellow track <laughs> alum. It's always cool to see like our fellow people like doing great things like you did. And, you know, you're awesome. And are doing cool. still. And are still, yeah. cool, especially with the PT <laughs> of course. stuff. So thank you for jumping on. We appreciate it. Uh, once again, she is Cassandra Polivu. I say it right again. Hey, yeah. look at that. <laughs> um, she, you, you can go and find her on Instagram. Um, you can see her PT things and things like that. Cassandra, T-I-A-N-N. What, what is that? What is that second part? Why? It's my middle name. <laughs> oh, is it? Tian? Yeah, Tian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see. The more you know. There you go. So and October 28th, Stockton Hall of Fame. Yes. Sanders going October, in. It's going to be amazing. October 18th. 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 I'm sorry. 18th. October That's 18th, okay. 2024. Um, if you can't attend, at least shoot a congratulations to her on Facebook mm -hmm. or somewhere. So we are talking in ovals. If you like what you heard today, like, share, follow, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, giving us subscriptions, comments, all that stuff helps us out. It pushes us forward so that we can show more great people that we have to the world. So we'll be back next week. Hopefully my voice will be back and it's not this garbage that you're dealing with right now. So once again, we appreciate everybody. Bye. <laughs>